Obviously, you guys have had a fantastic start to the season in the top 14, eight wins, top of the table. How are you feeling? What's the what's the feeling in the group going into the next season in the Heineken Champions Cup? Um, yeah, it's kind of, as you know, in sport, everything happens uh, pretty quickly and we're in our own little bubble in the fact that... Um, you know, it's good to hear someone outside of our environment say that because, yeah, it feels eight out of ten is is progress, and it's um, something that the group uh, should be happy with. I hope they're happy with. But as we know, uh, the top fourteen is marathon, and you have to compartmentalize everything in that regards. But um, I think the timing is brilliant where Europe comes in and. Uh, you know what a competition it is. Obviously, I don't have the same history for the Bouclier than I have for the European Cup, but um, I can't wait for Monday. I must admit that for when you know it, it's a, um, a Champions Cup week, that for me is um, has always been a special week and will always remain a special week. Absolutely, yeah. And this is your the club's third season um, in the competition. You had a couple of good wins last year in a tough group, and obviously. First season, the club did really well. What are your ambitions then going into this season? Have you have you set yourself any goals at all? No, we don't. And obviously, with the new format of the competition, it's obviously very very different to any other year. And uh, I know well, being part of a team that I suppose knew it uh, had a great skill in managing its way out of the pool stages, um, and there's a skill involved in that. But from for this club, uh, it honestly we haven't thought uh, beyond Edinburgh. It's about the first game. Uh, it's away from home. Uh, we know what you know the Welsh, the Scottish, and the Irish teams how they treat uh, this competition. So um, it's a game that's um, um, very very important because obviously. With the with the new form and as I keep referring to, it, it nearly becomes every game becomes a knockout, uh, and that's where we have to look upon it. Yeah, as you say, with a with a truncated format, there's pressure to be taking points from every game. And as you mentioned, that first game up against Edinburgh, what can you specifically expect from them as an opponent? What kind of a challenge will they bring when you when you face them? Well, I suppose we have to get our mindset around like it's like playing the Scottish national team. That's that's the the task, but that's to be, I suppose, relished. And uh, we know that the any teams, as I said, in in, in Ireland and Scotland and Wales, um, and obviously the quality English teams, there's a significant shift in performance when it comes to the Champions Cup. So this is what Edinburgh, um, I suppose, based their whole season around, especially their home games in Europe and their test players will focus the games for Scotland and also playing well for Edinburgh in these big, big games. So, um, you know, they'll have their objectives. For us, it's relatively new. There's a, I suppose, a high level of uh, excitement um, about this competition because the history uh, and for La Rochelle and Champions Cup, it's only at its uh, infancy. But, um it's very important that we continue to make progress. And um, the message all week will be that um, with the new format, it's 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 a competition. Um, you know, I mean, probably within two games, you'll know your fate. Yeah, sure. Um, as you say, it's going to be very interesting. And in the second round, you face Bath, um, who looked really good after the restart in the Premiership and have started to build a really good squad now. Again, what can you expect from that challenge facing an English side? What are they going to bring to the table when they when they come to visit you? Yeah, well, they'll obviously bring very good detail around their game, and they'll be hugely organised, and and they'll and they'll be fit. Um, you know, I suppose the big thing for us will be it'll be our first home game, even though um, well, we're not too sure. Hopefully, at that stage, crowds may, may be allowed, even if, even if it is only a few weeks away, but. Over here, especially in this area, there's massive progress being made in terms of beating the COVID. So uh, we may have supporters for that game. And, and I think um, that will give a huge lift to everyone here. Um, in terms of face and bath, obviously, they have massive history in the competition and they're a very proud team and they're well coached. 
um, as obviously Edinburgh are under Cockrell. So, um, you know, I think um, there's so much involved in it that we could be here for a long time talking each other up. But essentially, I think where my headspace is at and where a lot of the boys here's headspace is at is that there's uh, Europe is in town and we can't wait for it. Fantastic. And and as you mentioned, hopefully we're getting nearer having fans back at stadiums for these games as well. You've obviously at La Rochelle got incredible home support um, and we'd all love to see, you know, the fans being able to start coming back, which kind of brings me on to reflecting a bit more generally on your career and your relationship with the, the Heineken Champions Cup, your your achievements. Um, as a two-time winner, as a, as a top point scorer, among so many other things, can you try and evoke just how special the competition is to you and what it means to you personally? Oh, um, oh the, mom, the memories could, uh, come flooding back. I've seen a little bit of, uh, just when you hear that music, it just resonates inside of me and gives me, I suppose, an awful lot of um, deep, warm uh feelings um what a competition it was everything i think you know not alone just the i suppose the inner contentment we're playing with so many good guys in monster but obviously i played in a team that had an incredible bond with it with a full Tolman park um and they all went on the road and they supported the team and a little bit of as time goes by i think you appreciate that even more i've, I've seen a few of the uh highlights packages of during um the confinement period when there was a lot of old games where he played and um, you know I, to be central to that team or to be part of that team was was um, was incredible to, to I suppose step back away from it and have a look and go wow that was uh, that was some team I was part of and um, it it, uh, it makes me uh, incredibly proud because uh, I love playing with the fellas I play but I was a one club man it means a lot as a player, being a one club man, and um, we gave it so many good attempts. I think um, I don't know how many, but it was ten plus semi finals I got to with the team. Um, so, uh, what a feeling that is! Going, going, knocking on the door to winning the European Cup most years. It um, it gave the supporters and all of us that played in that red jersey um, such uh, such great days. Yeah, as you say, I think it was 10, maybe slightly more consecutive appearances in the knockouts that, that you made um, with Munster. And they, so yeah, but the knockouts was, yeah, I yeah, know, I know we lost a few quarters. Yeah, over, I, it wasn't consecutively, but I I think I'm I'm right in saying I played in 10 semi-finals, obviously. Um, only one for them, because we were in four finals. You know, obviously, uh we were a really, really, really good team, but I don't know, were we a great team? And But I can live with that. <laughs> no, I'm um, And so just to talk about that atmosphere, we were obviously talking about the importance of having fans in stadiums and how, how much we want that to, to return as soon as possible. Can you evoke just what it's like playing as a monster, you know, as a, as a one-club man, um, as you say, in that incredible side? What was it like playing a home game in the in the Heineken Champions Cup? Oh, you you felt ten foot tall. It was because it's only when you, I suppose, you get uh, uh, retire and you take a step back, you realise you've only three home games in Europe every year. So they're massive games. But as a player, you're just thinking next game, next game, next game. But then actually, when you think about it, we only ever played three games at home in Europe. Obviously, our quarterfinals were a lot at home as well. Uh, so they were all the memories that stood out and you multiply that by whatever 13 years you have 50 games you can kind of nearly search back at and they're all really good memories and if, if you're to date back I think you debuted in the Heineken Champions Cup at the stoop against uh, Quinns um, what do you remember from that day what were your first impressions what struck you about the, the level of the competition the atmosphere and all those sorts of things it was like, wow, I'm so out of my depth here. It was really David against Goliath that day. I think it was uh, Harlequins had a team of superstars of massive names, global superstars from all around the world. And to be actually on the same pitch, you were like, wow, this is unbelievable. Um, 
I like a taste for that. And it was a high scoring game, it was a quality game. So all of a sudden you're hearing everything and you're kind of playing the game a million times in your head before you even get to the Saturday. And then you play Harlequins with Will Carling with all, all these uh, people that you hugely admire when you, when you were growing up and um, you're opposite them in a, in a match. And, and it's a, a very surreal at the, at the start, but then obviously once you get more and more competitive, your goals change a bit. But that was, um, what an introduction to... Uh, to European rugby, I, I can I can still picture it like yesterday. Yeah, I can I can imagine, and it's stayed with you. And you've obviously built so many more memories along the way, and you continue to do so as well because you're obviously still very much involved with the competition, and you have been since retiring as a player um, in a coaching capacity. I just wondered if there were any inspirations from when you were a player, coaches that you worked with at Munster, um, or perhaps things influences from your playing career. That you've kind of taken into your to your work as a coach in the, in the oh program. yeah yeah most definitely yeah I've, I've I would probably always have been diligent and I've always been a bit of a note taker and I think um, I've I've plucked so many things off so many coaches and the fact that we were lucky in Munster that the vision of the club that did attract the best coaches from around the world going on three Lions tours. Um, you know, engaging with a lot of, of um, other coaches that coach you. But also you learn so much from players, I think, that you come across. And uh, I was lucky in my time in Racing as well, getting to, I suppose, coach an awful lot of uh, all-black greats and um, just seeing how they operate and then going to the Crusaders. And, and um, they, they probably have a very, very different view on on uh, on coaching and on rugby and mixing that, what I suppose, with the Northern Hemisphere flavour, it um, it really uh, I suppose crystallised a lot of uh, philosophies that I have on the game. <laughs> 